welcome back welcome back welcome back to uh, crowns crypto cave as always want to be wishing you a healthy and happy uh tuesday morning over here from a nice and bright actually sunny uh healthy kid finland one of the first days in a literally two months but you know what it's a sign baby it is a sign that it is time to do some good old cryptocurrency some very serious magic internet money uh analysis so as always wishing you well wishing you the happiest of the happiest the best of the best as we say over here on crowns crypto cave and let's get in a live scene as bitcoin um, actually doing uh, basically what we talked about last night. Uh, again, coming back down to that 3550-ish range, giving a little tappy tap, a little love tap on this uh, uh, as soon as a daily dollar opens at 3550. But now the games begin. And the games begin. And the reason why I say that is because this area needs to hold if the bulls want to maintain the overall more natural positive positioning now of course i say this and this is only with regards to the lower time frames and it's represented by this horizontal trend line right here which is also the the uh, the daily 21 exponential moving average which i could you know which we could adjust really all the way down to 35 25 so it's a zone as always 35 50 to 35 25 you start smashing through 35 50 though it's, i mean it's, it starts to really not look too too healthy now because bitcoin has already come down into this area um uh, I do not like the overall the overall structure of this price action right here. People are looking at this as a bull flag. I don't necessarily see it. If if even if I do kind of squint my eyes and try to make a an excuse for it, I would actually argue that the bull flag, if you were looking at it as one, has already has actually already broken down. And this is what you're looking at right over here. If if that was your general um, your general prescription on this price action, for myself, I don't really look at it as such. A bull flag, especially coming off of a low like this, when people are looking at this. And and trying to purport this as some sort of a major, you know, turning point within the market. Uh, a lot of people calling that the bear market is over when Bitcoin has literally not made a higher high, not even got out of the smaller consolidation that we're in, that we're currently in right now, and not taking out anything on a higher time frame. Uh, more importantly, uh, this to me is pretty. Um Delusion, I, I suppose, is the right word to be saying. So again, looking at this price action here, we are spending way too much time in this area, and this was very apparent um, as of yesterday, as Bitcoin has spent about one, two, three, and now four days, essentially going sideways after this major green, girthy green dildo over here on, that we had on Friday. So when you are talking about major market cycle lows being put in, and if you are going to have a confirmed reversal, which is what a lot of people were looking at this as, you want to see more of, and I'm going to use a term that I don't typically like to use, but and I don't, and I typically don't use, but impulsive, meaning it gives you very little time to get in if if it actually is going to move uh, onwards and upwards. So what I'm what I would essentially have been looking for is, you know, uh, consolidation for a, a day, maybe two at most and then take onwards and upwards. Instead, what we have here is we really have what is now confirmed as a lower high. We now will be fighting a uh, hidden bearish divergence on the daily two day and I believe three day are all conf sorry, three day is not confirmed, two day all the way up to the two day is is confirmed. Higher highs in the oscillator lower significantly lower highs in price action and you can see that this is just to be interpreted as far as I'm concerned as another rejection of the the green 55 exponential right over here we do have the 12 hour uh suggesting something as well which i uh, which i which i spoke on very briefly briefly yesterday and i hope that this didn't get thrown by the way because this is actually incredibly important to me um going back on over here yeah we do still have this you know we have the same sort of signature on the 12 hour we actually have regular bearish divergence uh, all the way up to a 10 hour but what I wanted to bring up on the 12 hour was this 12 hour stokes have confirmed a cross down. But more importantly, remember yesterday when we when we looked at this right here, this trend line connecting all of the tops within this consolidation phase, telling us again that this is just to be considered another piece of the consolidation puzzle, not necessarily a full on breakout or breakdown in confluence with the volume signature, which we'll look at in just a second, and also in confluence with just the overall structure of this. And then obviously, you know, our secondary indicators like like historical volatility rank, like, you know, our moving averages and and, and all the other you know uh trending oscillators so looking at this right here we do have this obvious trend line governing these lower highs on the stokes now i would not put too much weight on this if this had the regular settings i have a little bit special settings on this um which i reveal in my stochastics video and you can see that not only are we being stopped right here at the 70-ish mark which is about about the edge of the bullish control zone but we're also crossing down as well. So we are ha we are kind of forming this nice descending trend line, which is governing the overall momentum of this consolidation as it gets slowly ground further and further down, if that makes sense. So hopefully, hopefully I got that idea out properly. 
But essentially, when I look at this and we just have another rejection of the 89 exponential, 100 exponential, whatever the fuck you want to call it over here, and uh, an RSI is trading back down towards the uh, towards the exponential on this guy, and back kicked out of the bullish control zone, in back into the neutral zone, and you know, could you say that this is giving you some some hidden bearish divergence? It's kind of far away to really be relating this point and this point. I think it's a little bit more visually apparent on the two day, which is confirmed as far as I'm concerned. We do have uh, a local high, and what do we have now? We have another rejection of the yellow 20 minute exponential on the two-day dildo chart very important again just to show the hidden bearish divergence a little bit of a higher high here compared with this guy and of course with compared with this guy uh going all the way back to the 4200 tick or 4150 um you know about a month to, or sorry this was uh, end of december so about two months ago Again, looking at this area, we do have a. I, I think that I think that the overall cards are starting to really reveal themselves. Now we're going to go down to lower time frames. We're going to go down to a four hour, which I think <laughs> it's not. I do not consider this a higher time frame at, at all whatsoever. But let's just go over the overall picture. And I do believe that I'd be pretty comfortable in saying that we have something like this going on now. Before I was I was uh, I was representing this as a potential descending triangle. I believe that with the response of price action on Friday, we can now healthily say okay this is now filling out what is i mean technically speaking it's a fucking pennant descending triangle pennant coming off of a main a major downtrend typically going to be a continuation pattern of course not always not nothing's 100 always but more often than not it's going to be a continuation pattern bitcoin loves its triangles i love triangles as well as they you know as they just they seem to play out more often than not as compared to you know falling wedge which i think a lot of people are going to figure out pretty damn soon that perhaps this is just another falling wedge that is going to you know likely fall back on over um so again, as Bitcoin fills out this area, you do see a very obvious and orderly drop off in volume going from left to right. Again, giving us confluence that this is likely just consolidation. I mean, I, I feel pretty damn confident that this is just that just that this is just consolidation, especially as long as Bitcoin is still below this descending trend line that we've been looking at literally for the past three months, going all the way back to uh, to mid to late November. Bitcoin has not been able to close a four hour deal above it, let alone a higher time frame above it, and that's currently coming in around uh, thirty seven hundred even we could call it so as long as bitcoin is below there i have no real reason to represent this as anything other than that so when people talk about this being a confirmed low and now bitcoin is going to move onwards and upwards i would strongly suggest considering even just a lower time frame like this and again the higher time frames there's literally nothing changed um daily uh daily nothing has changed weekly uh hasn't changed in half a year uh in the monthly is well, we'll look at that in a second. That's that's the one that kind of scares me. Um, well, not necessarily scares me. I am short right now, actually. Uh, or sorry, I am looking for a short right now based off that as long as we are below 3,700, essentially, to get that, that idea out uh, properly. So just, oh, I should actually explain what I did. Um, I did not do this on my streamer account. I did this on my main account, so I can't actually show because I, I don't, you know, for obvious reasons, I don't really want to show that account. Um, but I did actually buy the 3550 uh, stab down during this morning. I did have a small resting order there, very, very small. And uh, and when I woke up immediately this morning when Bitcoin ticked up to 3575, I did get out of it. I don't like the reaction right now. Yes, it's very possible that Bitcoin, you know, takes it takes a formal stab down to this uh, to this horizontal at 35.25, and then boosts back up and uh, and gives this area another love tap, and that would actually be pretty damn normal, and it would actually be kind of nice to have another test of that green 55 on the monthly, which we'll look at in just a bit, um, as well as you know, obviously this descending trend line, you know, both in confluence with each other, as again we'll we'll confirm in just a second. Um, that's where I'd like to enter into another another major position. But uh, uh, for now, my eyes are on this area. If Bitcoin does take out 3525, there's very little stopping it from 3400 once again. Uh, so this is this is of extreme importance. Now, our lower time frame oscillators are actually switching around. And let me just get rid of this guy. We'll look at the Stokes really quick. Four hour Stokes are actually crossing up right now. A uh, little bit of a weak cross as it stands, but it is, it, it, it you know, it is crossed up. Obviously, you don't want to be fighting that. Uh, two hour has crossed up, gaining momentum up. Three hour has crossed up and then snaked back down that's typically a bad it's typically a bad sign and, and, and indicative of another you know kind of wave coming uh hourly stokes uh just hanging down the bearish control zone finding resistance right around the edge of that area so again you know another thing just you know aligning in that area it, the second that we go up to like the more medium time frames like the six hour the eight hour the ten hour those are actually still heading healthily down uh the eight hour getting right back into the neutral zone after getting you know after getting rejected from the bullish control zone same thing with you know same thing with the eight hour essentially actually just a little bit more fresh 
and uh, 10 hour, 12 hour, sorry, 10 hour right over here. Um, you know, same sort of thing. It's just crossing back down and 12 hour, as we saw when we began this stream, you know, not only hitting a trend line, which has been, you know, which has been valid for the last uh, two, sorry, three months, almost three months now but also crossing down as well and getting rejected from that zone. So that to me tells me a lot about price action. And I do want to be cognizant of that going forwards as Bitcoin does seem to be really respecting that area. And when you find a time frame that works, you use it until it doesn't work. And that's, again, I know that's 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 something that a naysayer of technical analysis will absolutely hate, but this is why it's an art and not a science. And again, this is one of the things that my mentor used to tell me. He said, it works until it doesn't and that's coming from a guy who had been doing it for literally 40 fucking years and that's the best that he had but again you don't need to be perfect to make a to make well really a shit ton of money you don't need to be you don't need to be perfect to make even a living um and that you know that really helped hammer in that point it's like oh okay that's pretty soothing it's not always going to work but you use it until it doesn't because well the trend is your friend until the end of the trend right and if the trend's been going for about over a year now a year and a couple months it's been pretty damn good it's been pretty damn good and i'll just keep on going with it until you know until told otherwise but for now even on the lower time frames nothing has switched around nothing has switched around we have we do not have volume confirmation we do not have pattern confirmation we do not have price action uh and and moving average confirmation and this is even again just on a smaller time frame now let's go over to the daily and see what the daily is doing right now uh daily is just playing between the 55 and the 21 um you know yeah the 21 typically speaking is going to be a buy on the next pass that's formally coming in around 35 25 i know i said 35 50 uh as well that is you know that is in play but it's a zone as always and you know what i'll actually put in a nice horizontal trend line right in this area and we can do it right here and that is uh and that is kind of like the current pivot so to speak so as long as bitcoin's above it you know yeah i you do want to see another little small run up probably um and test this area perhaps even again formally 30 uh, actually it's coming in around 36 uh, 70 now um, but the second they actually lose this area, well, it's back on to pressure to the downside. Yeah, there are supports um, around 34.65, but uh, I would be looking actually formally for a test of the lower support trend line of this formation. You know, we can actually put in something on this area as well. So this is the zone for the downside as long as Bitcoin is essentially above this block. I don't want to be, you know, too damn bearish looking for new lows. If Bitcoin does take out this area, yes, you still do have this support from your former lows at uh, 32.50. But I, I, you know, my opinion is at that point in time, you're probably going to get another flush, uh, just like you got from 6,000 to 3,000. Uh, I mean, it's not going to be, you know, $3,000 or hopefully not because I'd literally put Bitcoin at $568.50. That would be, that would be a little bit, you know, usually I say, <laughs> I'm, I'm very rarely surprised by the by by the craziness of price action that would be a little bit surprising if bitcoin really did go below 500 dollars. my god man or around 500 dollars. that would be pretty uh pretty brutal um uh, by the same token to the upside we have this zone right here uh, from about 36.50 to we could call this uh 36.90 3700 and that's essentially what we're looking at right now of course if bitcoin does break out to the upside yeah i think it's a little bit less likely right now i think that i think that price action is starting to reveal itself whereas the next resistance if that were to happen around 30 38.20 to 38.50 again i'm going to be doing these more zones now because I, I i think it's it's just the right way to be doing it and i don't want to you know it's i mean it's, it's the way that I actually do it so why not uh and then of course if that area gets taken out which i do believe that if bitcoin actually did if if bitcoin did take out this 3700 area my opinion is that bitcoin probably has a straight shot to about 40 50 uh the prior highs that would actually make a lot of sense uh but by the same token you know it's it's kind of like i don't trade my opinion just like if bitcoin were to break to the downside off of this uh support at 33 50-ish area then you know yeah i'd still be closing some positions at 30 32 50 just because it's your you know it's it's kind of your prior lows it's your former support it's probably gonna have a little bit of a bounce there at the very least my opinion is though we probably do flush at the, after that point because if you do break 3350 that's going to likely come in confluence with a break of the weekly 200 simple moon average which now we'll get onto the higher time frames and we can really get an idea of what has not changed um as far as uh, as far as a greater picture goes now here's a 200 simple rep represented by the red uh by the red moving average on the downside and you can see that that is coming in around 33, uh, 32 on Bitstamp. So if Bitcoin were to break it, that would literally be the first time it's ever broken it in in its in its history. Again, that's not necessarily fully, you know, people are saying that it can't break because it's never been broken in Bitcoin's history. It's just, it's, it's fucking young, man. You need 200 weeks to, ex to even go past before you can even put one tick on this. So it just hasn't had time. I mean, Bitcoin's relatively young. 
So when I'm looking at this guy, I am thinking to myself, the second that the 200 simple moving average breaks, I I don't see too much holding up from the next support ledge, which I have again around this uh, this blue box territory between 2300 and 2600. That's also the 886 Fibonacci retracement down here, and that is where Bitcoin actually did have its spike low in 2014. We do have some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around this area. We do have the volume profile signaling some massive thick AF volume nodes being thrown down in this area, and you will notice that after Bitcoin loses that 3300 number, there is nothing doing, just like you had from 6000 to, to high 3000s, there's nothing doing from 3300 to about you know mid mid to low 2000s actually and if we go to uh blx index you will see that the uh, that the 377 exponential is actually coming around that 2600 range and now let's get to the now let's get to the monthly uh because i did gloss over that but remember remember that remember the top of the consolidation triangle that we're currently looking at where was that coming in around around 3700 give or take a few bucks uh I, I suppose a little bit lower right now well where is that green 55 exponential coming in on the monthly again a very high time frame something that i put a shit ton of weight on again coming from my sort of background as a mark maker in equity options i would use the monthly to to denote if i'm generally bearish generally bullish on an asset um and if i were looking at something like this i'd say you are one tick away from confirming an extremely bearish setup <laughs> to put it lightly uh we have the grand 55 exponential which is at around 3670 so again where does that come into confluence with that with that consolidation that we looked at on the lower time frames right about at the top of the triangle right again doesn't mean that bitcoin can't break above it but as long as bitcoin closes this monthly below the green 55 exponential that means that you can get a wick above we could even break the consolidation to the upside on the lower time frames and then still end below 3670 before end of month that would be a very 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 bearish setup we would have both open and closed our first monthly dildo but below the green 55 exponential for the first time in bitcoin's history ever and at that point in time i would look towards where is this level you know the 89 cyan moving average is 2450 that is also within the bounds if you recall of what we just looked at on the next target around you know in, in the blue box territory that we looked at so again a lot of things lining up with this and we will be fighting a very nasty moving average cross between the 10 simple and the yellow 20 minute exponential and as bitcoin's consolidating this area i do can i do count this as basically a consolidation while this is getting resolved on its own and this is one of those com more common inputs that's on the boss and algorithms of the market which will intensify the sell programs most likely again doesn't mean you can't have your rallies in your bear market you certainly will just like you have your dumps in your bull market and that is the delicate part of what's going on right now it's it's i'm basically we're basically looking at okay is this the major rejection right now that i'm looking for because i my my bias is overall bearish i do not believe that the lows are in um don't really see anything that is indicative of a low and my and my fail safes for knowing if i'm going to be wrong are pretty far and away from being hit so if this is if this is the setup, this is likely worth a trade for me. Um, so again, I'm just denoting my own risk reward, you know, setups, how, you know, how, how I manage these sorts of things. I'm not saying that anyone should do this, you know, in exactly my way. In fact, I would suggest you should, you know, you, sh you, sh I mean, if, if you find value in what I say, just take what you like and then make it your own. And that's how you're going to make your own strategy particular to your own trading identity and your own trading personality. And that's going to make it much more. Uh, sustainable for yourself, which is actually going to be a big topic in the trading psychology series, which I'll be releasing um, this weekend on Saturday. Again, I uh, have a lot of people have been reaching out to me and asking me if I'm going to put this as like a course where you have to pay for it. No, I'm not. I don't want the added pressure of making this super professional right now. I I, I, I like the I, I like kind of the, the relaxedness of it, and I like you know using <laughs> using using my typical colorful language um, for better or worse. Uh, maybe at some point in time I will do a more professionals type setup, uh, and that would actually be pretty fun. I'm actually having a shit ton of fun putting this together because it's it's something that I'm quite passionate about, um, and perhaps at some point in time maybe I will go through the full rigmarole. But that those those programs take so long to put together, and, and it's so intensive, and it really takes a lot out of me. Um, so I'd rather. Uh, if, if I am going to do something like that, I want to wait till the market like truly dies down and where nothing's really going on so I can focus solely on that and, um, and, and, and produce something that I'd be extremely proud of. So again, looking at this area, looking at the lower time frames, it does look droopy, does look like it wants a little bit lower. Um, you know, technically speaking, again, you still do have this support here, uh, 3530, uh, lower end of this area. But uh, understand the confluences between the higher time frames and the lower time frames. Now, if Bitcoin does reject from this area and does work its way lower, that will start to look a lot more like a realistic rejection of the of the green 55 exponential on the monthly total time frame. 
And if Bitcoin both opens and closes this monthly total below, which it will have a chance because last, last month we actually closed our first monthly total below for the first time in Bitcoin's history. This will be a confirmed kill of a moving average, just like when the 200 exponential on the downside was broken. Uh, this would be an extremely big deal to me is what I'm trying to say and likely lead on to that next, you know, likely be the next big leading indicator uh, into the next, you know, dump, uh, I would imagine the 2000s. Um, so yeah, I always want to say that I am a long-term believer in Bitcoin, but uh, I'm also, you know, I'm also a trader who needs to make money and needs to make a living on a relatively consistent basis. So that is why, you know, that that's why I'm fucking bear in a, in a bear market, I'm going to be bearish, man. In a bull market, I'm going to be bullish. But in a bear market, when I get a bearish signal, I will take that all the time because it's more likely to work out. In a bear market, if I get a bullish signal, am I going to take it? I'm actually a lot more hesitant to. In fact, most of the time I will not. The reason why I took the 3550 trade for a small scalp is just because it's that much of a strong play that it typically works out. Now let's go look at the longs and shorts. Um, uh, and we have a few longs being gained in the last uh, since we last spoke at around 32, uh, 32,600. We have a we lost a little bit of shorts actually 20, 24,700 ish area uh, with about how many of those hedged? We have uh, three and a half thousand of these guys hedged, so we have lost actually about about half a thousand. Uh, so we really have about 21,000 open naked shorts versus again uh, almost 33,000 open longs. Now let me let me relay to you the importance of this, and that is because over here on the longs chart. Or sorry, on the uh, yeah, on the longs chart on Finex, I have this trend line as you can see at this thirty-three thousand level, and that actually lines up with each with major major dumps in Bitcoin's history. Whether Bitcoin just spikes to it or gets over it, it does typically tell you when there's too many people on the bus syndrome. If everyone has already bought, think about it this way: if everyone's already bought who's left to buy. And when Bitcoin is below all these major resistances and still using up all this energy, I mean energy, all this, all these margin positions to get there, that is not the sort of balance and power that you want to see that's going to lead you out of a bear market. You quite literally want to see it the opposite um, where everyone's trying to short and then, you know, you have, you have uh, in, in contrast, less longs. Now, does that mean that Bitcoin can't get, can't, can't get above this uh, 33,000 open longs uh, area? No, it does not. In fact, you see plenty of times where it did and it got all the way up to 40,000 but on those scenarios when it actually did get up to 40,000 when it came back down below this signal that's when the dump did occur like as far as timing goes so you do see us getting extremely close you actually see a wick perfectly to this area again I haven't changed this 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 this, this marker in ages it's not even supposed to be this fucking accurate but it it, it gets it more often than not, uh, funnily enough. So again, keep that in mind. Uh, 33,000 open longs is kind of too many people on the bus territory. Uh, shorts are actually letting go of their positions. It's quite literally the opposite right now. Um, we are at a critical point, you know, as far as, uh, as, as far as, you know, a lack of shorts going on. Uh, the too many people bus on this, uh, too many people syndrome on the bus I'm, I'm probably dyslexic or some shit, uh, is around 31,000 for shorts is what I found. Uh, anywhere above that typically lines up with major pumps. You'll notice uh, this th this one's of, of uh, particular interest in uh, middle of April when Bitcoin literally had, per I think it was the most intense one hour dildo in its literal history, the girthiest, most powerful, most veiny, just cock and ball shooting up and thousand dollars in, I believe, an hour period that was insane especially when bitcoin at that point in time was was around six thousand dollars now of course when bitcoin's fifteen thousand dollars and it you know and it does that that amount of price action that time less impressive but when it's six thousand dollars that's a, that's a it's like fucking crazy man um so again uh, anywhere on these spike lows, it be, uh, around the low 20,000 range, it actually does line up with major, major dumps in Bitcoin's history. I mean, you have this guy coming all the way back from March. That was your uh, 12,000 high, or sorry, was that your, tw yeah, 12,000 high uh, down to 6,000. Then we had this May high over here in 10,000 to 6,000. Then we had this August low right over here, uh, 8,000 to 6,000. Then we had this, uh, this November dump over here. That was 6,000 to 3,000. And then we are once again, it kind of within this territory, although not necessarily as close to as far down as the ones before so that is a counterpoint to what i'm saying but it's on the radar is what i'm trying to get out it's on the radar of being relevant so keep that in mind um let me just make sure that i'm still recording okay good that's been an issue in the past sometimes i'll record like an hour-long video and then i'm like 
Oh, nice. The mic was off. Oh, nice. Didn't hit the record button. Oh, nice. There's something playing in the background. Fucking good one, Crown. So yeah, I'm a complete moron sometimes. Or perhaps more more often than not. Anyways, uh, let's go check out um let's go check out GBTC, because GBTC is doing something very interesting as well right now. GBTC put in a very nasty bear trap and had an extremely good buyback on Friday. Again, the jewel telling you literally the day before to be a buyer, a perfect, a perfect buy signal actually. And those perfect signals, I have, I don't believe I have an example of where it's been wrong um, just yet. I'm trying to look, I, I don't really think that there has been one though, uh, yeah. Well, you don't, you don't really get them too often. That's the whole catch about it. You don't get them all that often. But when you do get them, pay fucking attention. If you do have the jewel, if you do have access to the jewel, I always want to say that. Pay attention to the newest video, which I released uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, so, yeah, on GBDC, on the lower time frames, that's where the action is going down or perhaps up. Uh, and when we do have this trend line here that GBDC broke, back to the upside but now is breaking back down below what's going on here if we go to the hourly you can see it's clearly resistance now too we broke back above if we broke back mountain above then, then then took a stab back below and now we've tested it once tested it twice as resistance and losing the 200 exponential what's going on over here is this is this a trap of a trap i i, I don't think i've really ever, ever seen something like that uh, perhaps i'm just calling it wrong altogether and what i really should be saying is hey what do you have here you just have probably another lower high which is just as valid i mean you have a very similar setup to what you had at the uh, 490 494 region what i do fear or, or 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 what i do have as my biggest counterpoint to bitcoin going down more immediately than uh, rather than going up or sorry what i do have yeah the biggest counter to 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 more immediate downside rather than going up um sooner is that gbdc has a massive gap right around this 469 region uh, that we put in in early January. And that would likely line up with spot charts getting somewhere back around 3850, 3900, the area that we looked at on the way up. Um, so again, if that were to happen, that's what I'd be looking for. But you can see that, you know, OTC bullshit, I, 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 I can verify that in traditional markets, when you have a gap, every, every gap in history has been filled, ever. And if it hasn't already, it will, it likely will be. I, I just don't believe that you've, you know, there hasn't been one that, that, I mean, like sometimes it can be years, but they, they typically do get filled. You, it's some, it's one of those things that you can typically count on. Um, in GBDC, GBDC t trades OTC, which is like basically penny stocks. You know, if you've watched the Wolf of Wall Street, that's, that was, they, they were trading like OTC pink slip bullshit, uh, which is what G, which is what GBDC is. It trades OTC. Um, and we do have this gap over here. Does that mean that it's going to get filled? Well, I mean, we had a gap at this area. Uh, GBDC gave it a try. Uh, late November, didn't fill it and continued for much further low. We had a gap over here uh, before the ultimate dooms drop. Uh, that's not getting filled anytime soon. So that would be a counterpoint to what I'm saying. Um, it, when, when we're talking about OTC, there are different rules that apply. And I have a lot, I don't really have much experience trading OTC. I don't have really any practical experience trading OTC as you know, when I traded, when I traded markets, I was trading on a professional exchange, New York Stock Exchange, ARCA, and then above Chicago boards, obviously exchange that it wasn't, these, these are like legitimate major American exchanges. If you're not familiar with them, OTC is like, <laughs> it's like, it's like going on to fucking cryptopia. Okay. Uh, to put it to, 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 uh, to relate it to something in crypto land. Um, so again, I am less confident of that, uh, but it is worth mentioning is what I, is what I do want to say. Let's go check out CME futures over here. Uh, CME futures just, just drooping down, looking nasty. Uh, this is your eight hour dildo time frame. We have eight hour stokes crossing the downside, getting rejected right at the edge of the bullish control zone. And we do have, you'll notice the same sort of trend line governing our highs on this guy. It's governing our highs again, shuffling it back down and grinding it back below. And this trend line goes all the way back to mid-December. <laughs> That's this high over here, governing our highs. So again, I really like this for an overall reading. You know, I need to just completely redo this chart. And that reminds me, I wanna throw up a fib on our regular ones right now, but basically something like this, right? We got something like this going on. We have a perfect spike to it on Friday and going off of our lows so far, something like this, something like this. Now, the biggest thing about CMEs is that the volume on Friday was significant, but remember, CMEs representing a very, very low actual activity of, of, of this market. Uh, same sort of setup here though, just different numbers. 3,500 is your major support. If you break 3,500, you don't buy it. You, you 
probably want to sell it. <laughs> Again, it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but I am just sharing exactly what I do in these exact sort of same situations. And uh, it's making the same formation overall. If 3,500 does break, I'd be looking, you know, again, 3,350, which by the way, the premium and or, and or discount on GBTC is pretty much on par, it is parity with, with spot underlying right now. Uh, so that is important. Let's see something like this. And by the way, the apex of this triangle that we're currently in is likely to, I mean, does it does have an apex in early, early to mid March. So we will choose a direction relatively soon. This, this is, this is likely to break, um, out of, out of match within the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'd say probably before end of February. That's what I'd be comfortable with saying. Um, barring we make something new, you know, if Bitcoin breaks this out to the upside, um, again, above 3,700, then yes, then we have something new going on and it's time to reconsider. Uh, but until that happens, well, not necessarily. Um, so again, going back onto spot charts and uh, let's put on that that fib that we just spoke of. And let's do this guy over here, uh, fib retracement. And again, we're gonna get very, 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 very good. Or, or we're gonna get, we're gonna, Jesus Christ, I'm speaking like fucking Spanglish or some shit. Uh, no, not Spanglish, but English is what I'm looking for, yeah. Uh, we're gonna get very good, it's like Jesus Christ crown, oh my God. I only speak one language and I can sound like a complete moron even doing that. Apologize guys, I do really wanna learn, learn a new language. I've been living in Europe for, a, I don't know, like a year or two now, uh, I should probably actually start learning some, <laughs> learning some other useful shit. Uh, anyways, um, so Bitcoin have a major drop down off of this consolidation, you know, at 6,000, you probably remember that for over a year, uh, putting in its major low so far at 3,150 and then having our first big dead cat bounce or likely a dead cat bounce where it's certainly acting like one, um, you know, we, and we have a very obvious signature into what the fibs are doing, which tells us what the bots and algs are doing. And this is certainly a very, very algo driven market, which is not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's just, it is what it is. That is trading. I mean, most, most markets are, especially in a market that does, I, I don't think that we have retailers left in this market. I hate Hate to, I hate to, I hate to, uh, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm like blowing anyone's mind by saying that probably the retailers, they all got wrecked in like February, man. So let's just call it like it is. And uh, you have your first big up over here, uh, putting in the high, then pop back down to the 618, 618 gets picked up. Where's the target going to be, you know, right above the 236 that gets uh, sold right back. And we're, where do we end right back up around the 618? Where's the target going to be next for the algos right around the 382, pop back down to the 618 gets picked up once again. Where's the target going to be once again, 0.5, pop back down to the 618 fails, comes down to the 786. Where's the target going to be on the 786 once it gets picked up? Well, as we spoke about the second that, that, that Bitcoin broke 3469 to the upside, Side, the target was going to be 3650 3700 right here which is exactly what happened again not saying that to to sound like oh i'm so cool whatever the fuck no it's so that you can you can take this on and do it yourself next time and there you go and now you can have a nice trade um by the same token this 618 now a critical level i would imagine that the next time it comes back down to it it probably breaks it that's my opinion that's my opinion um now does that mean that we can't get picked up here at the 618 try the 0.5 again and then fall back down yeah it's it's certainly possible certainly certainly very possible actually um so i, I suppose that's that's really all there's there to say about that it is, it is possible but i would be looking for the 0.5 to be sold either which way so whether it's a 0.5 or the 618 that uh that essentially fails that essentially rejects and, and when i say the 618 i mean to the downside um that's what I'm looking for from my next trade. And I do want to put on a new directional trade relatively soon. Look at the maturity of this price action. Look at the volume characteristics. Look at the space left within this formation. Look at the overall price structure. Look at the FIB signature. And you can probably see yourself along, alongside confluence of the higher time frames, the weekly, and then the monthlies that we looked at with the moving averages. It, it for me this this is this is worth a trade it's just about getting the 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 position that that has good risk reward at the current moment in time and for right now it's uh it's not really in my range um it's not really what i'm looking it doesn't really meet my criteria at the current moment in time but it but the overall setup is starting to really reveal itself so now i am you know i'm, I'm planning plotting and again i'll either want to enter in a position over here or if we break the 618 then i'll enter into position you know obviously less less good and i want to do these on the june futures uh because the margins are expiring soon which is actually why i'm getting rid of them i want to roll essentially and put on a slightly bigger position actually um 
So yeah, I believe we glossed over the the weekly a little bit fast, but I do want to say, you know, as long as Bitcoin is below the 200 exponential, uh, which is currently at around 4150, which is actually above, well above all the resistances that we looked at first. You know, the very small time, uh, the the very small time frames, the triangle that we're looking at, that resistance is 3700. If that breaks the upside, then the next area that we look at is 30, 3850 to 3900, and then then the one after that is 4050. The 200 exponential, which has been governing our lower highs ever since Bitcoin dropped down into this more aggressive downtrend off of this uh, off of this area, um, is is all the way at 41. is is above 4100. So that to me is also a very big deal. Why? Because as long as Bitcoin is opening and closing weekly doles below that 200 exponential, I am pretty fucking bearish. I'm, I'm overall bearish. Now, if Bitcoin both opens and closes a weekly doll above this 200 exponential, I immediately change my overall bias. And, and uh, you'll, you'll hear me really take on a different tone, and I'll probably even take some longs off that. Uh, is that the final nail in the coffin for the bear market cycle? No. In fact, you do, you, I mean, more traditionally speaking, you want to see price action get a back above the breakdown area, which was 6,000 or 6,100, I suppose, a little bit more accurately speaking. Uh, that would be the more you know, obvious and more traditional signal. Uh, I think that you'll have uh, you'll you'll have signals beforehand, and a big one is going to be that weekly 200 exponential, um, how it reacts so or how it responds to price action, and that's what I'll be saying about that. Now, you will notice we actually have done something for the first time in a very long time uh, with last weekly's dildo on February 4th, closing above the red 10 simple moving average. The last time that we actually did that was on August 27th, uh, literally what about like a half a year ago. Um, However, the next week, it was literally engulfed with a bearish engulfing, very massive, very girthy, and very powerful dildo to the downside. The last time that Bitcoin ever closed a weekly dildo above this uh, 10 simple moon average. So again, um, you know, it's, it's certainly more positive thing than negative. Uh, but I do want to. I, I just do want to temper the more uh, immediate bullish case because low time frames, they still have a lot of work to do. Medium time frames, still a lot of work to do. High time frames. Still a lot of even more work to do, you know, again. So so keep this in mind. Uh, when you look at the weekly, you do notice very, I think it's very abundantly clear that the volume on Friday is uh, what people are talking about as start of the bull market dildo is quite anemic. I mean, it's it's well below the volume moving average. Not a death sense in and of itself, but putting again, putting together the whole picture, I, I don't really see... Well, a lot of people are getting so excited about this just yet. I, you know, again, I want, I want moon boobs too. I am so in love with titties, but <laughs> I also don't want to be living on the street. And so I, I, I need to see proof first, not, not, uh, not, not delusion and hopium. Um, so for now, uh, the former trend is still, still remains, still takes precedence as far as I'm concerned. Again, looking at this whole picture at large, I know a lot of people are uh, the 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 other look is that people say that we're going to go back up to about forty five hundred because that is the measured move off of the current formation that we're looking at, which again goes back over to this guy. Uh, remember this this triangular consolidation that we're looking at. Uh, people are saying, hey, if you do bring it out to the upside, you will have a measured move all the way to about forty five hundred, which is true. You technically would have something around this range, or sorry, a little bit lower, uh, basically. Around this prior high at around 45.50, um, but again, you know, even a bullish break in a bearish market, I don't like it. If if we saw like a truly impulsive move, just a, a massive green, girthy green dildo just shoving you all the way up, you know, relatively fast to 4,000, then it would be a little bit of a different story. It'd be a little bit more um, immediately imposing. But by the same token, we can we can just easily break this on to the downside, and this would be pointing all the way down to where? Oh, do we have another thing pointing down to the mid 2000s? We do. 2500 right here 2450 actually so again you'll notice that that is coming into confluence with a lot of things um so again you know just keep keep these in mind uh bitcoin does break out to the upside you know we'll talk about it if and does if if and when it does happen but again 3700 needs to be broken first then we can talk about 38 essentially 3850 and then if that and then if that breaks in yeah 40 uh 4050 to 4100 ish area again the, the 200 exponential that's going to be the big test for me that would be the big test for me um as long as bitcoin is below there i i will be running with the assumption that we are likely doing more the same likely doing more the same so let's go check out some alt cones. Uh, let's go check out Miss, Mrs. Litecoin. She led the market to the upside and now getting rejected right where right where we said resistance was. Again, Litecoin is Mrs. Litecoin is the best is the best uh, potential example of maybe the of maybe the bear market being over. But again, um, 
or or, may, or maybe things switching around. But again, you know, as long as you're below 4750, it's still, I mean, not really, ch not really challenging this area. If you can get back above 4750, 40 or 50 bucks, then yeah, then this thing can run quite a bit. You know, $69, 70, 74, uh, 72 dollars wouldn't be out of the question if that were to happen. Really good volume on Friday's buying, but again, this seems to be an event-driven type thing. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't believe. I don't believe I've seen a bear market end on news, on bullish news. I've seen a bear markets end when the last seller has sold. That's why a lot of the times when you see bullish news in this bear market, it just gets literally sold into. It's used for liquidity for the downside. Uh, Litecoin, a special case because, you know, it doesn't take all that much to force this guy up. But again, keep in mind, uh, it has a higher time frame picture changed. Well, I, we have made a higher on the daily. I believe we have a higher high on the weekly as well, perhaps. Uh, do we? Yeah, we do. Uh, not bad. But, 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 you know, for uh, 47, 50, 50 bucks needs to be taken out, and then and then I'd be a lot more comfortable with calling this guy almost down. By the same token, oops, this is not right. Uh, but uh, by the same token, what are we fig what are we filling out now? If it gets rejected here, which it, which lower time frames have confirmed a rejection at this area, uh, it's just a rising wedge, you know, bear flag. And the target on this, if it does break to the downside, would likely be around this thirty dollar area. Um, so again, keep that in mind. Uh, keep that in mind. It needs to prove itself, and even with all of this, uh, all, all of this done to the upside, still did not take out the critical areas. Let's go check out Mr. Ripples. Mr. Ripples back below thirty cents now. Jesus Christ, man! And again, what do we have on Mr. Ripples? Uh, even on Friday's green dildo party, it gets shoved right back on up, reclaims a twenty-one exponential, and then immediately gets shoved right back down. <sighs> and what are we forming on this guy? A nice ascending triangle over the last uh, three months, or two months, I should say. Uh, this is really bad. Um, Daily Stokes uh, trying to get out of the bearish control zone, but they are crossed up, so fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but again, as long as you're below 34.5 cents, it's very difficult to be excited about something like this. Uh, losing all major moving averages now in the context of a bearish consolidation pattern. And I think it's a little even, it's even a little bit more nasty on a three-day delay time frame. Yeah, here you go. Here you go. Three-day delay time th time frame. Uh, death cross below all major moving averages. Rejected at the ten simple. Uh, again, just almost immediately. Almost immediately. Uh, what about uh, Stellar? Stellar Lumens. Uh, even worse. Even worse. Stellar. How dare you? How fucking dare you? Again, even on Friday. Gets gets to try the the uh, the the next resistance at eight and eight and a quarter cents. Very weak resistance. Still can't even get get past that, and we do have the three day Stokes for both Stellar and Ripples, Ripple Me Timbers. Um, you know, crossing to the upside or hinting at a cross to the upside. Not doing it. Uh, you know, again, it's. I, I, I would honestly be looking for a bounce on these guys soon. Uh, but my God, man, they just keep on signaling weakness. Let's go look at Mr. Buterall, Mr. Buttersworth over here. Uh, do we have do we have anything to be aware of on Mr. Butter, Buttersworth? Uh, basically playing between the 21 and the 10 simple. Uh, using using this horizontal as support at 118. So the big area for Mr. Butter, Buttersworth to hold is, uh, or to hodl, is this uh, one, I, I would say 117. Um, we've tested this one, two, now three times. I, I don't like that, man. I don't like that. The more you test this, the weaker it looks. And this is now confirmed as a little bit of a lower high now, isn't it? And we do have, do we have, uh, do we have anything to be aware of? We do have hidden, hidden bearish divergence between this point and this point. Although that is, you know, this is, this is not as impressive. That's not really like a local high. I mean, it, it is, but it's, I want to, I want to have it with this guy and we don't necessarily have that. Um, so yeah, as, as long as Mr. Butter, Buttersworth is below, you know, 131, nothing's really major. Nothing really major has changed. If it does break 131, then don't really see too much stopping it. Actually, from 145 on Finex, if it does break 117 to the downside, though, same thing as Bitcoin, probably coming back down to the lows. Uh, again, you know, daily Stokes getting up there, getting up there, get uh, gonna gonna be testing the bullish control zone t today. And with the way that the lower time frames are shaping up, it does look like you know. <laughs> Like it looking like it's coming under pressure right now. Uh, four hour stokes are going to be hinting at a cross up though, rejecting the bearish control zone. So there, there certainly are things you know conflicting with what I'm saying um, for my overall my or sorry my general bias. But uh, but hey, going back on over here to, uh, to to spot charts for Bitcoin, you know yeah, four hour stokes are crossing up. Uh, we are on what should be major support, but uh, it's looking droopy. It, it does look like it wants to come back down. Uh, eight hour, eight hour again. The higher time frames are, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more ominous. Um, 
So, yeah, I think that's probably going to do it for today. I guess we can quickly look at uh, SPIs over here. SPY closing the day unched, essentially. Again, this is why it's so important to wait for confirmation. Uh, I'll just be going off the weekly right now. I don't really have a strong opinion either which way. I do feel like, the, I do feel like our summation um, uh, indices are pretty mature. Um, if you look at the McClellan oscillator, I want to show it right now. Uh, it's, it's very, it's typically where you do put in tops. But again, I, I would not call this uh, even a local top until you take out the low of the last weekly dildo, which is 267 and 83 cents. If that does happen though, then I start looking towards two, uh, 262-ish area, which is the critical area for this guy. If he does take out 262, I would start to uh, entertain talks of reversal once again. I am looking for that. Um, but again, you know, if, if, uh, if SPY takes out the high of this dildo by the same token, there ain't nothing stopping this thing from 280. You know, 280 area, give or take, to give or take a couple bucks. Uh, volume on this certainly tailing off. Certainly, you know, a little bit lackluster. Uh, if this thing does turn down, it'll also be interpreted as an uh, as a rejection of a positive bullish cross on these on these uh, moving averages here. So, again, I am, you know, I'm on edge. I don't trade this. I don't trade this anymore. Um, but that's what I'd be looking for. Hey, whichever whichever way, it's a very easy trade to be taken. You know, whichever way that we actually break this Doji dildo right here is it's gonna be it's gonna be your next big direction most likely. Um, so yeah, back on a Bitcoin, I'll wrap this bitch up and then leave you off till tonight where I do another live stream most likely. Uh, barring any sort of ma major medical emergency, knock on wood. Uh, now I'm, now I'm gonna be fucked. <laughs> Remember the one time I went to uh, the 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 medical industry is really good here though. They have free healthcare, and one time I like busted my eye open. <laughs> it was great. Um, just walk into the uh, walk into the hospital. Hey, could you fix me up? <laughs> they don't even ask if you live here. They just fucking fix you up. It's awesome. Uh, but yeah, anyways, uh, enough talking shit. More into Bitcoin and Bitcoin. Again, very little has changed from a lower time frame perspective. Yeah, we have come all the way down to 35.50. I did play the bounce, but I'm out of the bounce. I don't really like the droopiness here. I don't like the hesitation. That's not a sign of strength. If, it, if this was going to be a more turnaround, if, if, or if this was going to be a more uh, ominous move to the upside, I, I believe that we would have seen it probably take off by the second or third day of this consolidation above 3,600. We did not. We came back down to test this area. It probably does bounce here a little bit. If it does back bounce all the way back up to 3650, 3700, I will take a trade off this and manage risk around here. Again, not a gar nothing's guaranteed, but it does it does offer up a good good potential. Uh, by the same token, if we do break 3530 to the downside, you know, yeah, you do have support at 3450, but uh, I believe that you'd be revisiting your lows relatively soon after that. Um, overall, very, nothing's changed on the lower time frames, medium time frames, or higher time frames. Doesn't mean that it can't, but understand the areas in which things do change and understand the confluences with the higher time frames as a monthly is of extreme importance me right now so that's going to do it for today guys it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you uh definitely check out the interview that i just did with uh with uh with fud tv elliot of fud tv we it was, it was a really really cool setup he does his he does the news first and then we talk about you know the overall setup of these charts and what to be aware of um going on and forwards here so again um as always a pleasure to speak with you wishing you well and i'll see you guys soon take care